I thought, in a weird way, it was an exciting transfer window, right? And then, look, some fans absolutely love it. Some fans hate it. I think it should end uh, before the season begins. But, um, look, we're fortunate in the Premier League that our clubs have money to spend. Um, and a lot, a lot of clubs did do that to a ridiculous extent. You do have to say that, Leanne, a new Premier League spending record of around £1.9 billion pounds. That smashed the previous record, which is about £1.4 billion back in 2017. And it totally dwarfed the rest of Europe. Uh, Premier League clubs spent more than Spain's La Liga, Italy's Serie A and the German Bundesliga combined. Sounds this, like your bank account, you. This is, <laughs> <laughs> mate, you're on TV every day. I don't know about you. Um, I, I think it's the Super League. I mean, this is the Super League. We're fortunate. We're in England. We're maybe in a bit of a, a microcosm where we just focus on our, our, our leagues here. Um, but when you look at what it is doing to world football as a whole and you hear um, that some managers feel like it's kind of distorting competition, not necessarily within our league, but, you know, when it gets to European competition, we, we, we're going to keep taking steps further and further ahead of some of the other leagues in Europe. Is that good for football as a whole, in your opinion? Um, I think the game's changed completely anyway in the last 10 to 15 years. I don't think it's based upon money. I think, you know, when you look at some of the Premier League years, when you watch them on the television and you look at the previous players that played, I think I wish we could go back to that. And I don't necessarily think it's based upon money, but then you look at when they used to be YTS, players that used to clean the boots of the players in the team. And I think that's important for the game. And I think the game's got lost a grassroots level with regards to that but I mean a stat that I saw yesterday that blew my mind because a lot of clubs talk about you know how much money that Chelsea, City and Man United have spent but since 2013 I saw this yesterday Chelsea has spent 1.48 billion secondly Manchester United has spent 1.41 billion now I say that because obviously Manchester United spent a lot of money but it's about recruitment isn't it mm. and it's about how you spend your money City were third on that list as well with 1.38 billion so you know the money is there and at the end of the day Teams will have more money. Newcastle, I think the Newcastle fans expected, maybe not the fans actually, a lot of people expected Newcastle to go and buy Mbappe, Messi when the takeover happened. But I think Newcastle have been very smart how they've gone about their business. And I think it's done them well. And obviously it shows you anyhow being given a long-term contract I think is massive. But I think the game's changed completely here. I really do. And I think the innocence has gone out of the game. So when you mention Super League, it rubs me the wrong way a little bit because I was one of the ones, obviously I'm sure you were as well, and a lot of people that were against it. But realistically... It seems like it's going that way anyway. Yeah, I, I think so. You look at sort of the the AC Milan takeover. I don't know if you guys have seen it happen a little bit earlier on this week, but it is another huge American investment group that wants to buy a football club. And you sort of think, why are these investment groups so interested? You know, especially with AC Milan, where you're going to have to build a new stadium. We know what's going to happen with the San Siro. So much investment. You're thinking, where are they getting this money back? They're an investment group. They're all about making money. And I honestly feel like you see Todd Bowley, another American coming into Chelsea, that maybe there's a sense across the pond that this European Super League could be closer than maybe some of us are thinking about. Um, Hopefully not. But I mean, obviously, someone like John Henry at Liverpool, he's been there for a few years now. But mm -hmm. sometimes, ultimately, you have to put your money where your mouth is. But it comes down to decisions as well. Just because teams invest doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to win. As we've seen that, you yeah. know, City are still yet to win the Champions League and they've invested a lot of money, but they have one of the best managers ever. So, and I expect them to potentially do that this year in signing Haaland. But at the end of the day, it's about recruitment. So it is about money, mm. but you can spend a lot of money on a lot of players and they, they might not step up. Look at Lukaku. Yeah. All that money yeah, they spent, yeah. Kepa. But exactly. Chelsea, doesn't 90 million. Mean gonna be... It doesn't mean you're going to be good, but yeah. then you know you could take a gamble on a player that not many people really know, it and they end up being really, really good. A little bit earlier on the drive, I'm sure some of you heard it. Uh, Darren Bent was rating teams, right, giving them a grade uh, in the transfer window. I thought, you know what, you know, it's all good to get Benty's opinions. Love listening to him on the radio, but I want to know what the fans think about their clubs as well. So you guys get your opportunity to do it on game day countdown this evening. Oh three seven one seven double two double three double four. Tell us what you think your team deserves in terms of a grade, but tell us more importantly why and where you think the club is going, good or bad, in terms of what they did this summer. But yeah, it was, it was, you know, it was an incredible transfer window. We spoke about the amounts as well. Chelsea spent more in one window than any club other, any other club in Premier League history, I should say. Man United also smashed their own summer uh, spending record. Nottingham Forest signed more players in one window than any other Which British like club you. in history. I you like, like that. that. I do, oh. because I think at least they're giving it a go. 
you know, a lot of people have critiqued Norwich when they've come up, gone back down. But at the end of the day, they're giving it a go. And, and I, I think that's a good thing. I really do. Another special mention for me has to go to Arsenal. I think that their recruitment this year, you know, Zinchenko, Jesus, I think has been really, really good. And Arteta has gone in there and, you know, you can see his plan coming into fruition. We're going to go through some of the clubs. And more importantly, when you when you guys give us a call and let us know which club to talk about, we'll be giving them our grades as well. So give us a call, 03717 But it was interesting. We're talking about all this spending. We're talking about what it might do to European football, Leanne. Um, let's hear from the Brentford boss, Thomas Frank, because he's had his say today on some of this Premier League spending. I think for single Premier League, I think it's good for them because most of the best players were... You know, everybody is attracted to either the best league, and is that linked with the most money? Uh, if that is linked, tick both boxes. A lot of players and coaches will will go there uh, because also the biggest competition. So I think in that way is probably good. But I think it would be bad if it's only English teams who's dominating Euros year after year after year after year. Um, hopefully, the bigger clubs in the other countries can do that. I think I, I like a competition across in Europe. Now I'm in, in, in England and loving the Premier League. It's a fantastic place to, to be. Um, and we are fighting everything we can against bigger clubs. What do you think about what Thomas Frank, the Brentford boss, had to say? I thought it was quite interesting, but I think, and I like Thomas Frank, and he's done a really good job at Brentford, but I think it's similar to when a lot of the managers say the bottom half of the table were against five subs. It goes back to budgets, doesn't it? And if they can get their foot, you know, in, in a, an advantage, then they're going to do that, aren't they? So I think Thomas Frank has got a fair point, but he doesn't have the budget at Brentford. But obviously other teams do. I don't agree with the point. He, didn't he say that he felt like English football would dominate? Would dominate, dominate well, in Europe, yeah. I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah, Why wouldn't but, we be okay but with But he's that? saying it's sort of sad for European football. But was it sad but, when but, Barcelona and Real Madrid were dominating for, for football? Mm. I don't think so. So I'm, I'm going to say I think it's a good thing. I hope that obviously... Manchester United would be back there, but we're not. But Liverpool, Manchester City, you know, them keep getting to the finals, I think is a good thing. The only thing that I would say on it is none of us want the European Super League to happen. No. But it almost, you, you almost think the other big clubs in Europe, we know some of them are totally against it, but you never know what will happen in the future, the likes of, of Bayern Munich. But they might get together and say, the only way we're going to compete with some of these clubs in England and the amount of money that year on year they're able to spend and that they earn through... Their incredible league, which is what the Premier League is, but the TV, the broadcasting money, you know, how are we going to compete with that? And the only way is to either, you know, sort of rearrange European football in UEFA for competition so that it's more more equal, if you like, or you create a new competition where you guarantee yourself more big games if you're a Bayern Munich or a Juventus or an AC Milan, for example, at Real Madrid, and we know Barcelona need the money, right? You so know? you were kind of saying, you in, in a roundabout way, that you they, feel like they, they're doing it already, but almost like not as public as they tried to do a couple of years ago, but it's almost going on right in listen, front of our eyes, but people are oblivious to it. There's a huge court case on the way um, in Switzerland, which will decide whether they find UEFA to be the only body that can run European football and, and in essence, whether FIFA are the only body that can run world football, if that court finds that anyone can arrange their own competitions, then the owners of these big clubs in European football are definitely going to use their money and their power to create a new competition. And they'll try and spin it to the fans however they want to, but ultimately they will say money talks. Yeah, but I do also find it quite strange some of the decision making from these clubs because obviously we did the show last season when Chelsea, you know, were going through that situation where they wasn't sure that the club shop closed, all those different things, right? But then look at their transfer window they've had. They've clearly been able to sign players. Look yeah. at Barcelona. They're able to get players through the door and they can't even afford to even register them. So it doesn't make sense to me. I've, I've literally wondered about this for a, a few weeks. How are teams able to sign players if they're not able to register them? It doesn't seem like it should be even possible. You know, Chelsea were talking about last season they weren't going to be able to sign players. They don't look like they're struggling right now, do they? No, 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 they don't. And listen, we're going to be talking about all of these deals. So here we are saying that the money in football is maybe distorting things slightly. But ultimately, we want to know from you and the competition that we have in the Premier League, highly competitive and a lot of money being spent. So many clubs, in fact, spending uh, over £100 million. Pounds, nine of the 20 Premier League teams spending over £100 million pounds in this window. You know, this sort of COVID recovery and the lack of money that clubs said that they had, that's clearly out the window now, right? We still want you, um, ultimately, to tell us what you think about what your club has done and give them a grade. Are you happy with uh, the people signing players at your club? Are you happy with who your manager has picked for your team? And are you happy that your club is going in the right direction? 03717 22334. 
Day Day Countdown with Hugh Rosencroft every Friday night from 7 on AM on DAB via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.